Before we jump into this video, if you'd like to play better pickleball in the next 30 days, just click the link in the description and I'll send you my free guide and 10 step-by-step -step videos with tips to help you play your best pickleball yet. And it's all for free. Just click the link in the description. Welcome to High Five Pickleball. Today, we are comparing Selkirk's top control paddles. The reason I'm making this video is because there are a lot of people who want more precision, better consistency, and more overall control in their game, and both of these paddles can help deliver on those things. But many people don't know which paddle to get. Should you go with the new Vanguard Control or spend a little extra to go with the Lux? We'll get into the price a little later, but I've played with both paddles over the last few months, and I've played with both of their predecessors over the years, and in my opinion, there is one clear winner. If you have an opinion about these paddles, if you disagree with me, or if you'd like to see more reviews on paddles in general, comment below and let me know what you think. In this video, we'll cover the overall specs of each paddle, the durability and warranty, the feel and sweet spot, the spin, power, control, and I'll share my final results and my takeaways at the very end, so be sure to watch until the end. If you wanna purchase one of these paddles, don't forget to use my code on the screen at checkout to get a digital gift card with your purchase. Using my code helps support my channel and it is always appreciated. To kick things off, let's look at the specs. I'm reviewing the Invictus shape for both paddles and I got both of them in stock weight. The Vanguard comes with the lightweight option, but at the time of this video, I'm only looking at the midweight option. One thing that I have to call out is that there is a lot of marketing language built into these product specs, which can make it confusing. Every paddle company does this, but I'm going to try and simplify it for you and call out what I think are features worth calling out. All right, I'll show the specs on the screen here. The Vanguard is 16 millimeters thick with a polymer honeycomb. They call it the X5 Plus. This was originally designed for the 006. The Lux is 20 millimeters thick with what is called the Thickset Honeycomb. Selkirk is calling this a proprietary blend. It's still honeycomb polymer, but the construction does feel different, which we'll get into later. The Lux also has a thermoform construction all around the perimeter to increase durability, enlarge the sweet spot, and absorb vibrations. The Vanguard has the traditional build with an edge guard, and the Lux has the open throat design with an edgeless build. The Vanguard has the T700 raw quad carbon fiber, that's a mouthful. And from my understanding, this is a peel ply carbon fiber that you would see in all Gen 1 carbon fiber paddles that have come out in the last few years. The Lux has what they call Florec carbon fiber. This is a spray on material. Both of these paddles come with a limited lifetime warranty. I will say Selkirk's customer service team is exceptional and they are normally very fast. Be sure you're aware of their warranty rules though. Starting off, let's talk about the feel and the sweet spot. The Lux has a huge sweet spot. Even for the Invictus shape, I thought that the paddle was very forgiving, and when the ball hit around the perimeter of the paddle, it didn't just die in the net. Suddenly, your mishits aren't really mishits anymore, and you're able to maintain control of where you place the ball, which to me makes the Lux very unique. The closer you hit at the center of the sweet spot, the better it feels. There's little to no vibration on shots, even out of the box, it feels great. From the Vanguard, it is stiff and the sweet spot is smaller. The shots that hit on the outside of the sweet spot often die, and out of the box, I also felt vibration when hitting the ball on regular ground strokes. I'm not exactly sure if this is just the paddle I got or if it was more common with every Vanguard. For the category of feel and sweet spot, I have to give it up to the Lux. Next up, we have Spin. The Lux comes with a spray-on carbon fiber, and I have to give it up to Selkirk. I was surprised at how much spin I could generate with a paddle that is so soft. This was a big improvement compared to its predecessor, the 003. Granted, how you maximize spin is different than most paddles. I found that the aerodynamic throat gives you the ability to whip the paddle more, and if you can flick or whip the paddle correctly, you can apply more spin. The RPMs I was able to generate were anywhere from 1900 to 2000. 
The Vanguard has a raw carbon face. Because it is not thermoformed, the spin performance was somewhere between a Gen 1 and a Gen 2 paddle. And frankly, the spin felt inconsistent at times where I would hit the same shot with the same swing, but see different results. The RPMs were also similar to the Lux around 1900 to the 2000 range. As for the durability of the face of each paddle, I saw a breakdown on both. The spray on carbon of the Lux began to wear down, although it was minimal, and the raw carbon breaks down on the Vanguard as well. By cleaning it often, I noticed that it prolongs the life of each surface. To compare both of these paddles on spin is tricky. They both have unique factors that contribute to the spin, they're in the same range of RPMs, and they both break down. For spin, I'm calling it a tie. I was pleasantly surprised by the power I could generate with the Lux. For a paddle this thick that is regarded as a pillow, this pillow can smash the ball. By the way, I define power and pop differently. Power is when I'm applying force to the ball, and if you can apply enough power yourself, you can see results. I'm thinking that this is related to the unibody construction. When you take a look under the stock grip, you'll see it is a unibody design. On shots like the serve, fourth shots and drives, I was able to generate considerable power and after adding weight, it was even better. The Vanguard also brought a lot of power to the table. I was impressed at the power you could generate compared to the paddle's predecessor, but unfortunately, it doesn't stack up to the thermoformed unibody design of the Lux. For the category of power, I have to give this one to the Lux. All right, and now for the category of control. When it comes to control and touch shots, the Lux just felt like an extension of my arm. Shots in the transition zone were easier, tough ollies in the kitchen were easier, and even returning those tough dipping third shot drives were easier. The dwell time of the paddle makes it feel like you can almost hold the ball on the paddle and place it wherever you want it to go. Now you may be saying, Adam, all of those shots are defensive. But here's the catch. I learned that by dialing up the placement of my offensive shots, this paddle made my offensive shots that much more offensive. No longer was I hitting shots harder just to put them away, but I was adding more precision with pace because this paddle gave me more control. And by adding more precision, it made me more offensive. The Vanguard also offers great control. The X5 core from the 006 provides better feedback on shots. Selkirk promotes this paddle as a non thermoform paddle as a way of promoting its control features. I think there is some truth to this because it is softer than a thermoform raw carbon paddle, and you do see some extended dwell time. So with a raw carbon face and an upgraded core, this is a definite upgrade to its predecessor. But is it enough to win the control category? My answer is no. I think the Lux still far exceeds the Vanguard in the control category. The Lux takes it. So here you have two very solid choices for control paddles. But in my opinion, the Lux is the clear winner. If you're looking to improve your control, consistency and placement and deciding between these two paddles and you have $250, I would go with the Lux every single time. However, if you only have $200 to spend but you're looking for a paddle that has control, I think the Vanguard competes well with other Gen 1 paddles on the market. But that is a review for another day. So what do you think? Is there something I'm missing about the Vanguard? Is the Lux worth $250? Is there a better control paddle that can beat the lugs? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, please remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss another update from High Five Football. Thanks for watching.